It was a long, long time ago. On the day that the State College Board had planned to interview me and name me president, Martin Luther King was killed. They appointed me later, before Bobby Kennedy was dead. But before I took over the president's office, we had seen the Democratic Convention, and we knew that the voices of thoughtfulness and care were silenced, and the hard men had taken over, and in the streets of Chicago, they beat our children. And so we all met here in September. The students become, in a way, strangers to me. I, my job. And the first issue of the student newspaper after I became president called on me to resign. <laughs> it set, you might say, the tone. <laughs> a, a citizen who hated me because there were black students on the campus poured black paint over my car. And another citizen called us from time to time and told us that our children would be kidnapped and bodily destroyed. And meanwhile, back on the campus, one day, some students came into my office and threw marshmallows at me, <laughs> leaving me with the profound question of just how much, what level of indignation is allowed a man who has been bruised by a marshmallow. <laughs> it was, of course, the gesture that counted. After Kent State, there was turmoil on this campus, a student strike, all sorts of things said, all things, kinds of things we needed to do. And having decided in what was billed as a confrontation to end the strike, I left my office to go to the student union. But before I got out of the office, a telephone rang. And a man said, I'm a major in the highway patrol. I have 23 highway patrolmen in Dilworth. And we're coming on campus to keep the peace. And I said, no, you're not. You can't come on campus until I send for you. And so I went to the union. And so I went to the union and 2,000 students, and I got up to speak to them, and the chief of police said, what will we do if they grab you? And I said, grab me back. <laughs> but nobody grabbed me. It wasn't that kind of thing at all. In the fall, before that spring, some of our faculty members and some of our students and some of our citizens gathered in front of our library and read the names of those who were dead in Vietnam. They read through the day and through the night, for there were many who were dead. Tom McGrath, professor of English at Moorhead State, wrote a poem. For a long day and a night, we read the names. Many thousand brothers fallen in the green and distant land, sun going south after the autumn equinox, by night the vast moon, moon of the falling leaves. Our voices hoarse in the cold of the first October rains, and the long winds of the season to carry our words away. The citizens go about their business. By night, sleepers condense in the houses grown cloudy with dreams. By day, a few come to hear us and leave, shaking their heads or cursing. On Sunday, the moral animal prays in his church. It is fall. 
But a host of dark birds flies towards the cold north. Thousands of dense black stones fall forever through the darkness under the earth. And after fall, winter, and spring, and another year, and I walked across the campus, and students watched me. There were many, the passionate, the passive, heads full of dreams, heads full of ashes, those who hated their fathers, those who hated war, those who hated school, those who loved books, the arrogant and the humble, the self-righteous, the self-doubters, the confused, the clear-eyed, eyes empty, eyes full of tears, mouths cursing, mouths praying, the simple, the complex. I see them still. All the years have passed. They are now the age I was then, and I see them still. They, driven by their imperatives, I caught in mine. Their fists raised high, their faces full of anger, but in the eyes, pain. I would not want it back again, and yet, and yet, I have missed them, and I miss them still.